We brought in some data that's fairly small. Let's see what it looks like when we need to pull in a very large amount of data. So I don't really need this sheet, although I could keep it and rename it if I wanted to. But what I have right now in here is useful, but it's not huge. What if I have huge amounts of data? I'm gonna to go to Excel again for this because what I have available to me is a million rows of data that's been stored using Power Pivot inside of an Excel spreadsheet. Now again, Power Pivot is a very powerful, useful thing, but it has a narrow set of use cases. If what you have is a, le a really large amount of data, you have relationships between tables that you wanna maintain, but you really need to use Excel for it, Power Pivot's a good, interesting choice. The thing you may run into though that's a little frustrating, the Power Pivot interface is not the same as Excel. So people who are used to Excel, they may be a little bit put off by the fact that once you start using Power Pivot, you have to learn some new things. Not all of the skills that you have from regular Excel apply the same way to Power Pivot content in Excel. So there's gonna be some learning curve for this. But I'm assuming that you've got huge enough data that it warrants this use case. I'm gonna close this down. And I'm gonna import that data now into Power BI. So again, I'm gonna tell it Excel. I'm gonna pull in this data that came from SQL Server and was exported. Normally I would just connect directly to SQL Server, by the way, but I'm trying to show you that if we did have huge amounts of data in Excel, we can handle it. These are the sheets, but these are the power pivot tables that I've converted into Excel. By using these, I'm gonna get more than just the data. So first thing, when I pull this data in, I don't have to tell it about things like the headers and the data types. It was able to guess that correctly because it didn't have to guess. The data types are being stored inside of Power Pivot and Power BI is able to read that metadata and feed off of the correct data types. We would also get this, by the way, if we were connecting to a relational database of almost any kind. When it reads the database data in, it also reads in what the relationships are and what the data types are. So if we can connect directly to the database, that's a better choice. But if we have huge amounts of data in Excel and we want to use this Power Pivot feature, we get that benefit as if it was a relational database, which is pretty neat. Once I've got that data and I'm sure it's right, I also want to show you that it can pull in huge amounts of data, but there is a performance factor happening here. It takes a moment. This would take a long time if it was a SQL Server database too though, because we are transferring all of that data across the wire and we're storing it now inside of this Power BI file. We have some other ways we can connect to Excel and to database data where we're using a direct connection and we're not importing it. We're just keeping track of the connection. When you run your report, it pulls the data live. That is almost certainly a better choice. It's giving me some errors here and those errors have to do with data type assumptions that it had to make. Some of my data types I didn't fill in correctly and it's yelling at me and saying, I thought these were gonna be say dates, but they're not. So the warning that we get in here is really helpful. It shows me exactly what went wrong with my data. This is especially helpful when you've imported data correctly and successfully, but over time, as people make changes to the data, they introduce errors. And this is something that doesn't tend to happen very often in a database, but is extremely common in an Excel spreadsheet. In a database, the data types are honored. It's a, it's a constraint, prevents you from filling, say, text into a number field. But in Excel, you can continue adding data into any box that you want, and it doesn't actually do a data type check. So if this is a concern for you, you might need to go in there and, and come up with a better solution. But I'm not gonna worry about that for the moment. What I wanna show you is, in addition to it pulling this data in, it also was able to see that there are relationships between this data and preserve those relationships. So this is a really nice feature. The fact that it's able to maintain those relationships when it brings it in, that type of uh, work between Excel and Power BI makes it super convenient for me. Next time I bring this data in, it'll run through that same script. Now that I know that there's an error, I can go in and I can correct the data type thing, add that to the script, and from that day forth, whenever it imports the data, it's gonna do it correctly. So I don't have to rethink this every month when I have to re-import the data or every day when I have to re-import the data. It's an automated process. 
Another really common problem that people ask me about is, I have some great data in Power BI. I have some wonderful visualizations and people are enjoying them. What I want now is to get my data back out. So we've got a couple of issues with this. The first issue is that this data that's in here wasn't really designed to be fed back out directly. Now we have it and there are some ways to do it, but the most typical type of user who wants to get the data back out isn't the one using Power BI Desktop. Because the person using Power BI Desktop had the raw data to begin with. The folks who are most interested in getting this data back out tend to be people who are using the web interface and are consuming the reports after the fact. So let me show you some ways that the people who are consuming the reports can extract their data and get it back out again. This is a, a, a table of data. And if someone wants to pull the data back out of here, we've got a couple of pretty good ways to do it. So the first is each visualization, when you hover on top of it, it gives us this little interface on the side that lets us interact with that visualization. And if I click on this ellipse right here, there's a choice for export data. It is only going to export the data that we're seeing in this grid right here, unless I specify that I'd like the underlying data. But even if you specify the underlying data, if it's done some aggregations, if it's totaled up values in the rows and columns coming from three or four different tables, it's not gonna export all of the tables from your raw database in here. It's gonna take the aggregated version and show us that. So I'm gonna do both of these so you can see the difference. Also note that it has 150,000 row maximum. So we have a limit to how much data it's gonna let us pull out of here and a smaller limit if we wanna export it to CSV. I'm gonna go ahead and allow it to do it as Excel because that's usually what people want. And let's take a look at what it does. So this is the data that was feeding into that report. We've got 189 rows with three columns. I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna do it again. But this time, I'm gonna ask it for the underlying data. So we've got four columns now. We had 189 rows of data. You can see we've got way more. So what it's done now is it said, well, when I aggregated this, I aggregated it based on another dimension, which is this revenue dimension. And because it had that other dimension available to it, when I asked it for the underlying data, it extrapolated it. So we wound up basically getting three times as many results out because it gives us the detail. It didn't give us all of the detail. It doesn't give us the sales granular level of information of who made the sale, what date each sale was made on. It's still aggregating it down to month and down to year, but, but it's at least giving us some of the underlying data. The next choice for how we might get data out of here is the data set that's feeding this visualization is available to us over here on the left. So this particular data set is the one called Lab 27. I'm gonna cl click on the ellipse from this and I'm gonna tell it that I would like to analyze it in Excel. There's no export button here, but there is a download PBIX. And I'd like to point out that the underlying data, if it's being exported into this PBIX file, and if the person has permission to see this download PBIX file, they can download it and they have access to all the same stuff we were just seeing in Power BI Desktop, because this will open up in Power BI Desktop for them. So we have to do a little, um, a little thinking about the security context of this data and whether it's okay for our users to download that file and see all of that underlying data or not. Sometimes the aggregated data is fine. It's okay for me to know how many patients we have, but I don't want people to see the individual records of patients and what they came in for. So the aggregate data needs to be the only thing they get to. Analyzing Excel is fine. If we have the granular data and we don't want them to see it, we may need to manage the permissions to prevent them from downloading the PBIX file. If I analyze this, what it's really doing is, oh, looks like I have a uh, installer that it wants me to install first. I will let it do that. So one of the wonderful and amazing and also frustrating things about Power BI is Microsoft has been working very hard to keep up with the latest trends and the latest, most interesting features. 
But in order to do that, they are doing updates to Power BI on a ridiculously rapid cadence. What that means to you is something that you learn how to do in January may look different in the interface in March. In some cases, I'm seeing updates happening every month. It hasn't been every month, but for the past several months, it has been almost every month they've done an update, and some of those updates have been fairly dramatic. Things like the interface has visually changed, the names and icons on buttons have changed, features that were originally in preview or in beta have been released. So the result is that for, for those users that you have in your world, and I'm sure you'll recognize who these are, the users who, when you change the color of a button, they can't find the button anymore. When you tell them in the instructions to click OK, but the button says continue, they don't know what to do next. Those users may find these changes extremely frustrating. But in this case, what they're doing is they're giving me a new feature that allows me to not export the data per se, but to export this ODC file that is a connector to Power BI from Excel. When I open this, Excel doesn't actually get the data. Excel links up to Power BI. It warns me, hey, you're about to hit some stuff on the internet. You okay with that? I'm like, yeah, sure, it's fine. Because it's going to hit Power BI for that data, it wants to know whether I am a person that it trusts. So I have to sign in using my, um, my account that I'm using uh, in Power BI because Excel is using Power BI to get this data. So this is, um, so we're gonna sign in now in order to make sure that the information that we're getting is allowed to be seen from the perspective of Power BI because Excel is connecting to Power BI. And it's not actually importing the data. What it's doing is giving us something kind of like, um, like a pivot table. But the pivot table that it's going to connect up and show me is hitting the raw data from the web service in Power BI. Where it should. There we go. If you've used pivot tables before, you know that this is a fairly useful interface for exploring data, but these are related concepts. I have sales, I have locations, I have products, and I can now say, well, I'm interested in knowing my information by say product, so show me the product information, the name of the product maybe, or instead of the product name, maybe the category of the product, and then show me my total sales for that. And this is a fairly fast round trip. Excel is not doing the hard heavy lifting here. Power BI is doing that. We are using Power BI's data as a service and all that Excel is doing is consuming that service to show me this information. If I'd like to add in a filter where I can see this by something like country, I can go in and say, okay, what I'd like to now do is add in a slicer, let's say, that lets me put in the country. So this is a very powerful interactive combination of features where we are now using something that came from Excel maybe, fed into Power BI, and then is giving me a performance boost inside of Excel because the data that we're hitting, these sales, it is aggregating that data across a million rows right now. And it's doing it very quickly because it's able to do this back and forth to a enterprise level server class environment. Well, that's all I have for you for right now. The main things that I want you to be able to take away from this are if you have data and it's in Excel, we have some great ways for you to share it. A couple other things I'd like to mention that might be useful for you to know. If the data that you have is in Excel and you wanna share it with people and you don't wanna to have to keep doing updates manually, because at present, if that data was on your desktop, for example, and you wanted to share it, you would have to refresh the data in this PBIX file. And then after you've refreshed it, you would have to go in and republish it again so that the data is being sent from Excel on your machine into the PBIX file, published out to the web server so that other people can see it. A couple other options that are available to us, if you have data that's being stored in OneDrive or in a SharePoint site. 
talking about Excel spreadsheets that are stored in OneDrive, Excel spreadsheets that are stored in document libraries inside of SharePoint. We can connect to those services directly. So in order to do that, instead of connecting up to Excel, we're actually gonna do something a little bit different. We've got a choice for connecting up to a SharePoint list also that I'd like to mention. SharePoint lists are useful, again, if you have a lot of people who need to edit the data simultaneously. Excel's not great about having 50, 50 different people all updating and entering data at the same time, but SharePoint lists are available as a data source for this. But if what I wanna do is connect up to some data that is stored inside of um, an Excel spreadsheet in OneDrive, for example, I can just say that I wanna connect up to Excel and I can connect directly to OneDrive from there. I can also through the web interface do this. I can click on get data. I can tell it that the data I want is a file. It knows that Excel is one of the file types that it's friendly to. And if my data is in OneDrive, I can connect directly to it from here and pull in some data this way. We get a couple of interesting advantages when we connect this way. Because it's not importing the data by default, we can tell it instead to connect to the data. As people make changes to the Excel spreadsheets, it's able to do an automated refresh of that. Now that doesn't mean it will do an automated refresh, it means it's capable of it. We often have to set up how often we'd like that update to happen. In some cases, depending on what kind of licensing you have, once an hour, Power BI will automatically check to see if the file's been changed and it'll update it if it needs to. So if you have people changing it and once an hour is good enough, that's fine. I'm not sure actually with a regular license that you can make it happen more often than that, but if you wanted it to be slower than that, you could also do that. Tell it to only do the update once a day or once a week or once an hour uh, or once a, a month, for example. A lot of data that people import only happen on a monthly cadence, so we can do it that way. Same exact thing for connecting up to SharePoint. If we connect up to the SharePoint data, because it has access to it right from the web interface, you can empower people to see the data in a more live way rather than you having to manually change it. If someone goes into the Excel spreadsheet and updates it after it's been connected like this, and then they realize that they wish that the data had been updated, but it isn't being updated for another 20 minutes and they wanna see the report right now, another thing that we're capable of doing from here is looking at that data set and asking it to do the update more frequent or right now. So the data that I'm looking at right now, um, let me do a refresh on this page. So this data is a workbook and it's this cool Excel. And if I've done some updates and I look at my reports and the reports haven't been updated yet because it's set up to automatically refresh, but it's not for a little while, I can click on this button and I can tell it I'd like to push the refresh right now. So people can manually be empowered from the web interface to make changes to the data, to refresh the data, and then go in and see the updated report right away without having to wait for you to go in and do the steps manually. Thank you for watching. I hope that I uh, see you again for our next installment of Power BI Tricks and Tips.